Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Photography Tips and Tricks, your show for gear tips, inspiration, anything you need to get your photography over to the next level. My name is RC, and this week I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, I was out in Dubai doing the Gulf Photo Plus uh, workshop, and before that I was out in Vegas, and I came across this, the Tamron 15 to 30 lens. It's a 15 to 32.8, and the folks at Tamron were like, hey, listen, you want to take this with you and kind of give it a shot? So I borrowed it for a couple of days and I made a shot that was kind of a very expansive area, but it wasn't necessarily something that I could cover in one shot. So what I did was I worked with 15 millimeters plus 15 millimeters to kind of create this kind of super panel. So I figured it'd be a good idea to kind of talk to you about the process. So I went up to Dubai and I'm trying to make a picture. This is the shot that I'm making right here inside of the Burj Khalifa. So I'm doing this at our 100 ISO. I'm at F16, eight seconds, right? So I'm looking for a night shot. It's about 15 millimeters right there. So I thought that the lens performed very, very well. I've got a lot of detail, right? From edge to edge. I'm looking at all of this stuff and I'm like, this is pretty good. I thought it did okay but it didn't necessarily cover everything that I wanted from here. So what I want to do is I wanted to kind of make this super wide panel, something that just kind of looked very, very expansive. So how did I set most of that stuff up? Now, I wanna kind of show you something because we talked about this briefly. This was the shot that I did over to the left, right? A little bit darker, not necessarily as bright as this one. Right, because the sun's kind of falling off of this and then it moves over here. I wanted to match most of that stuff, so I'm gonna shift click the two of these and under the settings inside of Lightroom, I went in here and selected match total exposures. That balanced this side over very good. Now, let me just stop here real quick. This is all stuff that we're doing inside of Lightroom. If you wanna see more of this, go take a look at the Lightroom show over on Kelby One. So it's a new podcast for you, right? I'm doing it with Scott Kelby. Shameless plug right in the very beginning. but. I got the two shots, right? So this side right here looked pretty cool, right? I just swung it across. So the Burj looks a little tipped on this side. This side kind of looks, oh, it looks okay, right? So I'm gonna grab both of these shots, right? The, I want the expansiveness of that area. So 15 millimeters in one direction versus another. Like I wouldn't have gotten in and off if I would have just gone dead center and tried to grab everything from one side to the other. So why not experiment with this? Having the two together from inside of here, I did a right click, and from here I'm gonna go edit in, and I'm gonna merge to panorama in Photoshop. This is gonna take both of these layers, and it's gonna put both of these layers together on top of one another, and I wanna be able to kinda of merge it, but I wanna do a little bit more than that. I wanna blend these two images together, so I'm gonna select auto, I'm gonna select blend image, and I'm gonna select geometric distortion correction. That's gonna give me a good way for you to grab that information and it'll try to overlay the best features of each of them. And what you're going to see is it's going to do a little bit of this, right? It'll grab it and it'll twist it and distort it to try to get it to sit straight. I'm not all that worried about it because what I can do once that's done is I could always use something like Puppet Warp or I could use Content Aware Fill to kind of round it out so that I don't lose as much as I want. So this looks like it's almost done. Now mind you, these were actual DNG files and that's it. It's taken care of. Now, what would I do here if I wanted to kind of finish this off, right? I could take these two files and I'm gonna merge them. Once I have those merged, I'm gonna move, grab my layers panel here, move this out of the way here, and I'm gonna do a transform and I wanna kind of fill this out. But instead, what I'll do is I'll go over here on the edit, I'm gonna go to Puppet Warp, Puppet Warp is gonna create this mesh. I'm gonna hide this. I'm gonna drop a pin here, 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 and here. And once I do that, unless I can pull this section out, I'm gonna pull this section out. I'm gonna pull this bottom section out over here. And you'll notice that it starts kind of correcting that distortion right there. Now that kind of sets everything up right there. I can drop one more pin right here, and one pin right there and I'll just turn the burge just a little tiny bit. Now, I'm not gonna do too much. This was actually one of the sample files that I was kind of playing around with. I have a shot that I did at dusk, which I'm actually more of a fan of, but I figured this is a good way for us to work with this. Once I have that set, take a look. It looks like right there, I got a little bit of you know, mess on my sensors because I was changing the sensor in the desert. Uh, I'm just gonna make a selection around that. 
once I grab that, I'll go ahead and grab my patch tool. I'm a big fan of the patch tool. Just move this over to the right, and that's done. And now, once that's done there, I don't want to, I want to make sure that I have as much as I can here. So what I'll do is, I'm going to make a rectangular, I'm going to make a rectangular elliptical, no, not rectangular. I'll use a rectangular. I'll cover that entire edge right there. I'm going to select, modify, feather, 10 pixels. Once I have that there, I'm going to content aware fill. That'll take care of a portion of that sky. And now I'm done. So that has a good portion of it. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to content aware fill the bottom of this, right? Because it's, how's it going to know what to do with the bottom of that? I'm going to save that, close that. I gotta tell you, I was, I was pretty happy with that lens. I thought, I thought it performed very, very well, but I was looking for like that kind of epic shot. So inside of here, this looks like it's done there, right? I'm gonna twirl this back up here. I'm gonna use my crop tool, letter R for crop. Bring this up. Not bad. I'll add maybe a little bit of pink into that area, and then I'm just gonna open up the whites a tiny bit. Do one last crop for a little bit of a rotation adjustment and we're done. So now we have a really, really cool shot. And it's put together with two 15 millimeters to create a really big expansive space. So when we come back, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about how to use your iPhone to get GPS data that you can put onto these pictures so that you never forget where you did that shot. We'll come back here in just a little bit. here with the Photoshop guys. Hey, what's up? We want to clue you into a webcast that we are doing on Thursday where these guys and Scott are going to give you their top 25 features of Photoshop CC. But there's a catch. They have to do it in two minutes or less for each feature. And you know that's a challenge if you know a little bit about these guys. Or there will be consequences. Hey, hey dude, not yet. No, not too yet. soon? <laughs> If you want to be able to see what's going to happen, make sure that you tune in. Link's right here. Make sure you register. We'll see you guys 7 p.m. this Thursday. That's disgusting. Welcome back, everybody. RC here for Photography Tips and Tricks. Now, this is just a little quick tip that I use to kind of remember the locations that I'm shooting with, so I figured I'd share it with you. Now, we saw these two pictures that we were working with at night, right? Now, I don't have a GPS camera with me when I'm doing most of this stuff, right? So a lot of the times, I could put a GPS module on it, I just I haven't gotten around to it. I'm sure there's stuff that's really, really good, but I know what I do have, and that's my phone. So I carry my iPhone with me, right, everywhere. I take a picture, and I'm almost always taking a pictures of myself kind of doing stuff. So in this case, I wanted to take a picture, right? One of the shots that I did, I wanted to get right off the very, very edge. So that thing right there, that's that Platypod, that Platypod Pro that we were talking about in the earlier episode. Made it a lot easier. If you missed it, right, that's this guy right here, the PlatyprodPro.com. So it's kind of like a plate for you to use your camera. Now, the next one. Hmm, I'm getting ready for that. So the tripod, I was able to kind of get it in one location. That was pretty good. The other thing that I used was this Pixie. And we talked about that also in an earlier episode. I just kind of want to show, because people will ask at one point or another. But I take those two iPhone shots, right? And I've got those set. Tripod's pretty much all set there. That's the really right stuff. Somebody's going to ask. I figured I'd mention it. Now, these two shots I did with my iPhone, right? So inside of here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the map module. And inside of the map module, you'll notice that it pulls up the location of where I did most of that stuff. And I can go ahead and zoom in more and more and more and kind of get exactly where I took those shots. If you zoom back out and get less and less and less, so you can kind of move that around as you see fit. Now, what I want to do is I want to be able to take these pictures here and here and I want to assign them to that location. So inside of the Map Module Lightroom, all I'm going to do is I'm going to shift click these two, select this third one, and you can drag them on top of that location. And once you let it go, 
now they have the GPS of that one area. So at any point in time, if I need to be able to find where I did those pictures, it's just a question of just going right there and go, all right, looks like I got all that stuff tagged and ready to go. Very, very easy tip inside of Lightroom. Now, if you wanna see more of this kind of stuff, make sure, I'm gonna pull this up here real quick because I think it's important to mention, go to kelbytv.com. At the kelbytv.com website, we have a brand new show called The Lightroom Show. Tons of episodes that are happening every week. Make sure that you check that out. Now, another website that I want you to take a look at is Strobus, strobus.com. Dave Hobby's got a great website for you to take a look at for flash photography. So between that and the kelbytv.com website, you're going to have a lot of information to go through. Now, last thing, Photoshop World. Make sure that you go to photoshopworld.com. We are going to have a great time, August 11th through the 13th, 2015. Make sure that you check that out. Also, ooh, I have one more thing I gotta talk to you about. The Peach Pit has an ebook deal. Make sure that you go to peachpit.com slash kelby1, enter in the code kelby1, and you are going to get this ebook the last layer. If you want to be able to take a look at this book for new methods in digital printing for photography, this is a great place to do it. 40% off of that as well. That's pretty much it for this week. I'm a little jet lagged, but I will be fresh here for next week on Photography Tips and Tricks. Take care, everybody.